Hey guys, so Sen and welcome to our project 62 of this course. So in this video, we are going to be creating this rotating gallery by just using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So now if I just click on this next button right here, so it will now just gives us this rotating gallery right here. And if I just click on this previous, so it will now gives us these previous images right here. Okay. So this is what we are going to be building by just using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So without wasting any further time, now let's jump right into our code and write our code. So first of all, let me just create a folder and let me just give a name of like 062 of rotating image gallery. And inside this folder, we are going to be creating three files. The first one will be index.html. Then now let me just create like style.css. And finally, let's just create our app.js for JavaScript. Now let me just make it a bit bigger so that we can just focus on our code. All right, so first thing I would do is I would just write my doc type HTML. Now let's just change this title to be like rotating image gallery or rotating gallery would be fine. And now let's just link it with our CSS and also with our JavaScript. Okay, so now let me just hide this metadata from there. And now we are good to go. So the first thing I would do is I'll just create a div with a class of image container. Okay, so inside this image container, we are going to be creating our span and now let's just give a style of just dash dash i it will be like our local variable and now inside that we are going to be just creating our image so let me just write an image so now if you guys want to use the same image like mine which i'm going to use for this project so you can find the link in the description below and you can just uh, grab it from there or you can just use your own image so now let me just select my first image i've just let me just copy that and paste the link right here so now let's just duplicate that like eight times. So this one will be the first one. So second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and eight times. Okay. So now let's just change this one to two and also change the image. And uh, by the way, I've copied these images from unsplash.com and you can choose whichever image you like. And this one will be now second, uh, this one will be now third one. And now let me just copy this image link and paste it underneath in here. And then this one will be the fourth one and paste the link in here and this one will be the fifth one so change this uh, variable and now let's just paste it in here and then we are going to be writing our sixth one so this will be the sixth one and now let me just paste that in here okay so now let's just finally write our seven one not finally but we still have one more left and now let me just get the link paste it in here and finally now let's just add our add one and paste the link in here okay so once we save it and now underneath these pens we are going to be writing our buttons so we would have our btn container inside this button container we have two buttons and now let me just give them a class of like btn and also the ID of like prev for previous, so prev and duplicate, then we would have or next. Okay, so change this one to like next, and button class will be for both of them. So once we save, now let's just right click on it and open it with a live server. All right, so this is it for HTML. So now once we save our file, and this is our images right here, and this is our two buttons right here. Okay, so everything is working the way we expect them to work. So now let's just jump right into a CSS and now let's just style that a bit. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just select my body and I'm going to just remove that margin and now let's just provide a display of flex. Flex direction will be column because we want everything to be totally center and now let's just write align items of center. Okay and text align will be also center. Now let's just give a height of 100 VH and the background will be totally black. Okay and now let's just provide overflow of hidden severed and this is how the currently the things looks like right here okay all right so now the next thing which you have to do is to select our image container so now let me just grab the name of it and here let me just paste the name of it right there inside there we are going to be writing our position of relative and underneath that we are going to be writing a width of 200 pixel and also the height will be 200 pixel now let's just write our transform transform style and it will be now set to like preserve 3d and now let's just write our simple transform so it will be now set to like perspective and we are going to be changing these values like perspective and rotation once we jump into the javascript file so now let me just write like thousand in here thousand pixel and also let's just write a rotation to the y-axis zero degrees 
Okay, so that's that. Now let's just provide or transition like transition. Come on. Transition and it will be now set to like transform. Transform and 0.7 seconds. All right, so now let's just jump right into the image container and now let's just select or each of these spans right here. Okay, so now let's just write our image container and now let's just select our spans. Position will be totally absolute. Top will be zero, left will be zero, width will be 100%. All right, so now let's just write our transform. And now let's just write our rotation to the y axis. And now let's just write our calc function. Inside this calc function, we are going to be using our variable which we have created right here like this one. And we are going to be changing that inside our JavaScript as well. But for now, let's just use that. And now let's just write our times 45 degrees. Outside of that, we are going to be using translate to the Z axis. And now let's just write 400 pixel in there. So once we save it, okay, so everything is looking a bit clearer right now. And we cannot see all of these images. So now the next thing which you have to do is to just select our images, which is right here, right here, okay? So now let's just write like image container of span and now let's get our images. Position will be totally absolute. So so this one is a position of relative. So we want this span to be inside this image container and also these images as well. So that's why we provide a position absolute to it. Okay, so top, not top, but left will be zero and top will be also zero. And now let's just give a width of like 100%, save it. And this is how it looks like right now, okay? So now let's just style or buttons. So first of all, let me just get my image container, which is not image container, but buttons container. And now let me just grab that. And here we are going to be just using position of relative and width will be just like 80%. All right, so that's that. Now the next thing which you have to do is to grab all each of these buttons, which we give them a class of BTN. So now I'm gonna just write like position of absolute, which will be still inside this uh, where are you inside this image container so we want to provide a position absolute for that and now the bottom will minus 80 pixels and now let's just write a background of crimson and you can choose whichever kind of color you like and now let's just change that color the text color to be totally white order will be none and also let's just add our padding of 10 pixel and 20 pixel and now let's give them a little bit of border radius of like 5 pixel and cursor will be totally pointer so once we save it and we cannot see our buttons. I don't know why. I guess I messed up something in HTML. So now let's just see. Oh, <laughs> now let's just cut this div from there and paste it underneath there. And this container, this buttons container will be outside from this div, my bad. So now let's just save it. And now here you can see we have this next button right here. So now let's just get our previous button. So for that, we are going to be just writing like a prev. And now let's just pour a left of 20% percent and now let's just duplicate that and change this one to next and this one will be now set to the right of 20 percent so once we save it and here you can see we have these two buttons right here okay so we are almost done with the ui but the final thing which i'm going to do is i'm going to just provide a little bit of filter on these buttons so let's just add that so now let me just select my button and once we hover over it so you want to just provide a filter come on a filter of brightness and now let's just write like 1.5 would be fine. Okay, it shouldn't have to be an idea. It should have to be a class to save it. And now once we hold our mouse over to it, so here you can see we have this brightness right here, okay? So that's that. And we are almost done with the UI. The final thing which you have to do is to just go to our JavaScript and provide our interactivity to it. So the first thing I would do for JavaScript is I'll just get our image container. And also, now let's just get our previous button and or next button as well okay so the first thing i would do is i'll just select my image container and inside this image container let's just get like query selector query selector it will be like image container now the next thing which you have to do is to get or preview button so now let's just write document dot get element by id of previous and duplicated and now this one will be set to next and now let's just write our next btn Okay, so now let's just cut these comments and now log everything to the console image container duplicated two times and now let's just change this one to pre button and this one to like next button so once we save it and now let's just open our console 
So here you can see we have image container. We have this uh, button right here, previous and the next one as well. All right, so now we are good to go. So the first thing I would do is I'll just create a function, given name of like rotate. Inside this function, we are going to be just providing like image container. Now let's just get there and change the style, style of the transform property. And now let's just set that to like um, perspective of 100 pixel, 1000 pixel to be precise. So now we are changing this property right here inside this function, which is this right here, okay? And now the rotation is currently set to like zero degrees, but now you want to change that to like rotate to the y axis. And now let's just change this one to x, and we are going to be rendering this x dynamically. So for that, now let's just create our variable. So now let's just give a name of like x, and the value will be zero. So currently this is a zero. So now this value will be currently zero. So now let's just use this function and attach even listeners on these next and previous buttons. So now let me just write like uh, previous button dot add event listener. And now you want to just write a click event on there and you want to execute this function, which is um, inside this click event add event listener. So now let's just change the value of this X to be X. And then we want to just uh, rotate it at the 55 degree. And now let's just call our function right there. Okay, so once we save it, and if I just click on this previous button, so it will now just rotate this image gallery or this container, which is this image container to the 45 degree right here. Okay. So the next thing which you have to do is to just duplicate this function and change the name to be like next button. And also this one to be instead of plus. So now let's just write minus. So once we save our file, and now if you just click on it, so it will now rotate or uh, gallery to the like 45 um, percent so here you can see we have this next button not 45 percent but 45 degrees so here you can see we have this uh, next button working and also this previous button is also working right here okay so we are totally done with our project so i guess that was it about today's video and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye